Today, I want to do something that I haven't done in a long time. I want to make a little bit of a tutorial aimed to those of you that are just getting into the filmmaking genre and the filmmaking niche and are picking up a camera for the first time. Because there's a couple of things that I've learned throughout my journey as a filmmaker and YouTuber and content creator that I wish I had known when I first picked up a camera. How are you doing here? Haven't seen you in a long time. Well, I have, but I didn't talk in my previous video. And by the way, if this is your first time watching me, welcome to the channel and uh, hope that we can get to know each other and that you're gonna have a fantastic day and a fantastic time here uh, when you're watching my videos. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. That'd be highly appreciated. Let's start with the phone and how to use the cameras that are actually accessible on a phone such as the iPhone 13, iPhone 12, the Samsung Galaxy S29 X52, whatever it's called. Oof. It's windy today. I'm just gonna, just gonna hold like this, so you maybe hear me better. On most cameras nowadays, you have a medium, a wide and a tele zoom lens on your phone. And being able to utilize those different camera modes when you're shooting is also going to help you to enhance your storytelling. The good thing about this is that you can choose how you want your videos to come out. So in this case, I'm going to try to capture a wide shot of the tram arriving at station. And then I'm going to punch in to the telephoto lens so that we get a sort of an interesting cut. On the iPhone, you have a couple of different settings that you can use. For example, when you go up here, you can set the different resolutions that you want to use. HD, 4K, 25 FPS, 30 FPS, 60 FPS. When it comes to exposing the shot on a cell phone, especially on the Apple iPhone, it's very simple to just do sort of like a tap and then drag down the sun to adjust the exposure, whether or not you want to have more of the sky or less of the sky, more of the shadows. It all depends on what you're looking to highlight in your shot. For example, if you want to lock the focus in a shot, say for example that you're shooting here and you want to lock the focus on the trash can, you just do a tap and hold, and then you can see it says AEAF lock. And now you can also adjust the exposure, drag it way down. So when you move the camera around, it's not gonna adjust the exposure on the go because you have locked it and the focus point is gonna be in that place. Say for example that I got this shot and I wanna have focus on the rock here in the foreground. What I would do is just tap and hold and then now you can see that everything in the background is blurred out. And it makes for a very interesting shot when you have the focus on something in the foreground but you have movement in the background as well. And this can help you to enhance your storytelling if you want to focus on something that is here, someone walks up to get it or something similar. But when I move the camera around, the focus is not gonna be adjusted. So what we need to do is that we're gonna adjust the focus manually and then reset it by tapping and holding. It might be obvious that these kind of functions already exist in an iPhone, but the reason that I wanna show it to you is because whenever I'm shooting with a camera such as my A7S 3 I'm using this function a whole lot. I'm using the manual focus to set up a specific shot or enhance the storytelling and make sure that I get a variation in the shots that I'm capturing. Because if you're only capturing, for example, wide shots, then it's gonna look something like this. And it might not be as interesting as if you were to use all the different techniques that you can use. For example, you wanna use a wide shot, punch into a tele shot, and then maybe a medium shot, and then back to a tele shot, and then back to a wide shot. There's so many things that you can enhance in your videos when you're using different filmmaking techniques. Whenever I'm shooting with a phone, especially, I try to have a dual hand grip so that I hold like this. If you were to hold it with one hand, you're gonna get a lot of shake. And it's not gonna look as good. Holding it with two hands and then trying to do slow movements with your entire body. Don't do it like this, because it's not gonna be as good as if you were to push in slowly like that. Looking at my iPhone, you can see that I have the rule of thirds activated or sort of like a grid so that I can easily frame the shot according to that and make it look interesting in a matter of seconds. And when you start to learn how to use the rule of thirds, you're also gonna have a way easier time when you go up to a bigger camera to frame your shots and make sure that they look more professional. 
For example, in this shot, you can see me filming Anton when he's walking. And what you need to think of when you're framing according to the rule of thirds is that, for example, if Anton is looking to the left, then you should put him in the right-hand side of the frame because you want to give space on the side where his face is looking towards. Because if you were to frame it differently, it would look very weird since he's walking to the direction which is basically just outside of frame. So when you see those shots side by side, it kind of becomes obvious why you should frame with space on this side depending on where the person is looking. But it also depends on what kind of shot that you're capturing because if someone is walking, you want to make sure that you have space on that side. But if you're just doing, for example, an orbit around a person, then you might want to keep the person centered in the frame instead. When you're following the movement of a subject, it's also making the video a little bit more intense. It makes it feel a little bit more alive rather than if you just were to do like this. So walking with your camera and being in the action is also very important for the videos to make them feel different depending on what it is that you want to capture. When it comes to frame rates, you have to think about what it is that you want to capture and why you're shooting in a frame rate that you do. For example, if I'm going to shoot one of the bikers that is swishing by, it's going to look something like this if I use 25 FPS. And if I go up to 60 FPS and shoot the same kind of shot, it would look something like this. Playing them back side by side, you're probably not going to see that much of a difference unless we slow them down because that is where you get the advantage of actually shooting in a higher frame rate. And one of the questions that I get a lot is, can you shoot B-roll with a phone? And when I say B-roll, I mean the kind that I did back in the day. <laughs> well, yes, you can, but it's not gonna look the same. It's not that you can't get a blurry background with your phone, because if you move close enough to a subject with your phone and make sure they set the focus, you're gonna blur out the background. And it's gonna look good. It's gonna work for most videos that you do. But if you wanna move up to a more professional standard and have a better image quality, then moving up to a bigger camera will help you get a smoother blur on your backgrounds, but also better exposure and more dynamic range. Phones are incredibly good today, and this is probably gonna be more than sufficient for anyone that wants to start their own filmmaking journey. Filmmaking is basically a bunch of shots that is compiled into one single video in the editing process. And if you wanna learn how to edit like me, you can jump in to the link down in the description and check out my Final Cut Pro course, because it's covering everything from start to finish that a beginner needs to know in order to be able to learn how I edit my videos. You're also gonna get footage, so you don't have to go out and shoot. You can just start, jump into the practice. You're gonna get a free plugin. You're gonna get my personal commands in Final Cut Pro so that you can use them in your own settings when you're editing. And also, you're gonna be able to join in on the Discord server with me in it, and we can talk and discuss the different videos that you're editing. Link in the description. Check it out. Capturing environmental shots, in my opinion, is something that is very hard. What you can do is try to kind of look around you and try to see if you can find something that looks interesting. And standing in this spot, it's kind of hard, but over here, I can see that we have the Swedish flag. And I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna capture that behind like the, oh, Denma. Uh. <laughs> see maybe we should walk up to that container instead and this is also a perfect sample where i would use 60 or 50 fps to capture the movement of the flag because it's moving so intense like this and we out watch so what i tried to do was that i tried to keep the flag on one of the lines of the rule of thirds so that i could keep it a little bit more interesting when we look back at the shot and then we can slow it down it's gonna look kind of cool Again, it's very important that you try to think of what the surrounding is like, what you see when you're looking around so that you can capture the details and the essence of being in the place that you want to capture. I think that that is, that is one of the most important things when it comes to filmmaking. So how do you apply all the things that we've talked about in this video so far to a bigger camera? Well, it basically works the same. There's a couple of things that is different, but you can shoot in auto with a bigger camera as well. Just flick it into auto, and it's gonna do the job for you. The difference here is that you can't do just like the tap and hold and drag, swipe up and down. You gotta learn how to use the shutter, aperture, and the ISO. And we basically call this the exposure triangle. 
And once you learn this, it's also going to be way easier for you to know how to get a specific shot. For example, when you're shooting with a camera that is big and you have a lens that is an F4, for example, that is kind of a basic kit lens. Then if you want to have a blurry background with that lens, you want to try to adjust the aperture so that it has as low as a number as possible. And in this case, it would be f4. And you would also want to move closer to the subject so that the subject is close to the lens and background gets blurred out. Because what aperture does is not only controlling the amount of light that your camera can consume, but also the depth of field and the focus plane. So the lower the number on your lens, the more blurry the background is going to be. And once you have adjusted the aperture to your liking, you can adjust the shutter speed. So if you're shooting videos, one of the simplest standards is to think that you're shooting double the frame rate, as we talked about previously. And doing this will give you the smooth motion blur in your shot. For example, when I'm waving my hand like this, you can see this kind of like blurred out because I'm shooting at one over 50. But if I were to crank the shutter now to one, over a thousand. Sorry, I'm just gonna expose correctly. You can see here that when I'm doing this with my hand, it is like you can see every single finger of my hand. Back again, down to oh, 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 one over 50. Down we go with the ISO. And we do it again. You can see this kind of blurred out. This is a very great example of how shutter speed works. And it totally depends on what you want to capture. For example, if you're shooting a lot of sports and you want to sh make sure that you get really like sharp and perfect images when you're shooting video, crank that shutter up. Make sure that you have it high. Don't care about the rules that are set for filmmaking. But having a general rule of how to set your shutter is very good so that you get a nice looking image in your final result. And as you just saw, when I was adjusting the shutter speed, in order to compensate for the lack of light, what I did was I dragged up the ISO. Because if I don't drag up the ISO, we're just gonna have a very low and exposed picture. So let me do this again. If I drag up the shutter, you can see that the image is getting low, right? Uh, image is getting low. Oh, I mean the exposure is getting low. And now what we want to do is adjust the ISO to still keep the blurriness of the background, right? So I'm gonna go up way high. Now we're at ISO 25,000. I do not recommend you shoot this high. But if we don't want to have the ISO that high and we want to let in more light to our camera sensor, then what we need to do is that we need to have a lens with a wider aperture, but we don't have that. So the only option that we have is to adjust the ISO. But dragging down a shutter is gonna do the exact same thing. I hope you get the point of how the ISO and the exposure triangle work. Basically try to think that if you're adjusting one thing, you gotta adjust the other. But if you wanna keep a blurry background, try to stay as low as possible with aperture. I also remember there was a lot of discussion when I started to use a bigger camera that you should shoot in log and you should make sure that you shoot in the base grade ISO of your camera, but don't. When you're just starting out, this doesn't matter at all. Don't care about those things because the most important thing is that you learn how to actually frame shots, how to use the focus and how to use the exposure. Everything else is gonna be something that you learn along the way. And it's also something that is very fun to explore when you feel that you know all the basics. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's video. I feel, I feel energized today, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I ate a bag of chips yesterday. <laughs> Here I am posting jump roping and Do you say jump rope? I don't think you say skip rope on social media. And then I ate a bag of chips. Ah, there, there, it's going out the butt. Um, if if you uh, enjoy this, make sure you subscribe and uh, don't forget to check out my Final Cut Pro course. There's a link in the description. Going to be a lot of stuff uploaded this year. Can't wait to uh, see you in the next video. Hello, Peter from Sweden is uh, having a cup of coffee and uh, oh, say so. <laughs>